Lewis Hertham, what was the most exciting thing about coming back for Westworld season two? Coming back to Westworld for season two. Yeah. That was the most exciting thing. You know, just get it, just having the opportunity to work with all these amazing people again, uh, to have the opportunity to uh, dive into more uh, of what's going on in Peter Abernathy's head. Uh, the challenge, it's an extremely, it's quite an extreme challenge. And uh, I love that. Uh, what's been different about uh, Peter this season to season one? <clears throat> hmm. Well, I can only speak about what has happened so far and what has aired so far. And um, not a lot. Uh, he's still having some issues as you, uh, as you see. Um, He's got so much going on in his head that, you know, having uh, a, a one sort of uh, uh, train of thought is quite uh, difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, I thought it was a very lovely scene uh, with Evan, you know, when, when uh, Peter recognizes her. So not a whole lot has changed, at least so far. Yeah. What what's what's the biggest uh, challenge for this uh, for this season for you as an actor coming back to this role? Um, I guess he's got um, also like you know, one train of thought, but also the thought of the train as well. Yeah, right. Uh, I think the biggest challenge, to be quite honest with you, and I'm, I'm not so sure if I pulled it off or not, but um, I think the thing that I was most concerned about since at least to this point, episode four, uh, three, when you last saw me. Um, was since I, I was still glitching, it was to be able to bring maybe something uh, a little bit different to it. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, there were some, certainly some editing that happened in, in the scene, especially with Bernard and I. And uh, um, that was the biggest challenge. It was like, well, you're gonna still be glitching. So maybe if you could bring in something different. Um, so um, that, that, that's the answer to the question. That was the biggest challenge, whether or not uh, I was successful or not. Mm. I guess well, leave that to others. Yeah, I guess what like was interesting was he is in such a glitchy uh, mood. What we've seen so far this season um, is sort of finding also that uh, humanity where he does um, recognize Dolores, and there is still that. Uh, well, I guess a bit ironic humanity with the robot, but. Um, how, how was that, uh, part? How did you, um, what did you bring to that sort of moment? The humanity part of it? Yeah. That's really the easiest part, quite frankly, for me, uh, because I have a daughter that, that is like my Dolores, uh, Olivia, she's, she's pretty much my, my life. So getting, you know, fitting into the, to the space of a, a father who adores his daughter is really quite easy. And then to, be doing that scene with someone as skilled, as authentic, as amazing as Evan Rachel Wood makes it uh, so much easier. Personally, I love those kind of scenes. I love doing emotional scenes. I just, um, I, uh, and again, with, with Evan, it's, um, I mean, we just get in close proximity of each other, knowing that we have to do an emotional uh, emotional scene. And we both get very emotional. I mean, when she just comes, uh, I, I'll never forget, I'm laying in that bed and she walks in, we're getting preparing to do that scene. I mean, I just see her and, and her preparation. I can see it, you know, that she's wearing it and, and ready. And uh, just immediately it, it, it chokes me up. Um, mm -hmm. By far the easiest part and, and, and favorite part of the show for me. Yeah. What's, what's the most uh, fun thing about working on Westworld? Man, how long is this interview? <laughs> we got about 15, 20 minutes. Like. No, it's uh, it just, first of all, I think for me, uh, I can say that just, just growing up watching Westerns, every red blooded American boy and maybe Australian boys and Chinese boys and, Japanese boys and German boys and French boys. I mean, everybody wants to go to the old West, right? Mm. So there's an enormous amount of excitement and fun just being on this show. Uh, but again, when you, when you work in this business, I think there are times where you work on shows where there, you know, people are not maybe having as much fun 
but everybody is having a blast on this show. Working very, very, very hard. Long hours, difficult hours, but everybody is there because they love it. And, and that's really the most fun. I mean, I can't wait to get to work every time that I work on this show. I've worked on shows where, you know, you go, oh, gosh, how many more days? But uh, this show, every aspect of it, just being able to be challenged uh, to see beautiful people and work with beautiful people to learn. Um, I'm one of these guys that's always paying attention to what's going on. Uh, and the this is the cream of the crop. Every aspect, every every crew position, every key position. So that's fun. I like to learn, and it's uh, it's it's always a learning experience. Is there an actor in season two you feel like you've learned something from, or an actor? Yeah, one of the actors um, that I've worked with or that I've been watching on the show. E either. You know, I could watch Jeffrey Wright read the phone book. Uh, so I, I feel like I learn something every time I watch him work. He's yeah. uh, just so masterful. And I, I love watching actors do very little and say a whole lot. And he is a master at that. Mm -hmm. And so is Evan. Um, and of course, Ed Harris. I mean, that I've been a huge fan of his for many, many, many years. Um, and uh, I've actually been compared to Ed in, in a few times in my career, which is always really uh, uh, fun and, and flattering. Um, I and Tandy Newton, I, I mean, and I got to say, did you see last night's ep episode? Yeah. I have to throw this out because I'm a huge fan of Angela uh, Serafins. And in that little moment that she had, where she's in the in the bar and she sees the, the new Clementine, mm -hmm. I, I, she it broke my heart. I mean, she's like thirty second scene and it was just so extraordinary. So when you watch that and you go, okay, the she did so little but said so much and it was so memorable and so touching. Yeah, I learned from watching all of these actors. I mean, they really are extraordinary. Mm. Yeah, what uh, you. Uh, initially uh, got your sort of start uh, looking for stunt work and doing sort of stunt sort of things. Uh, do, you don't do your own stunts. Is there any stunts in Westworld that you would love to do? I would love to be able to do more stunts, but I haven't really been uh, called upon it, uh, that. Um, yeah. I, I actually, um, I wanted to be a stuntman ever since I saw the film Bullet, as we talked about, I think, in our last interview. Uh, so by the time I actually got to Los Angeles, I wasn't pursuing stunt work per se, although I, I grew up with that in mind, I was pursuing acting by then, but, uh, I, I was, and have been able to do quite a bit of my own stunts, mostly fight scenes, maybe falls some precision driving, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, but no, there, there, um, I mean, listen, if it was up to me, uh, there, there are a great deal of uh, stunts that I'd be doing on Westworld, but we'd have to, Peter would have to be uh, in a different frame of mind than he is currently. Have you seen a stunt on the show, whether either watching it or while you're out there filming it, where you've been sort of maybe even a little jealous going, boy, I wish I could do that? Well, not only the stunts, I mean, the, the, the shootout in, in the, episode, uh, the pilot episode, which of course was duplicated last night brilliantly, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Shogun world. Um, I would love to be a part of something like that, an action scene like that. Although I wouldn't even mind being the guy behind the rifle as, uh, Ingrid did so brilliantly. Uh, yeah, the, the stunts are, um, they're all very sort of practical. I don't think there's a whole lot of CGI going on, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, any. I love physical. Act, I love physical acting, and I love physical activity. So, yeah, just so they know, I'm I'm open to anything if it comes my way. Mm. Yeah. Even though you've only been in a sort of really one episode so far this season, uh, your character has been a big focus. A lot of people are very interested in um, your character, and I guess um, we're not quite. I guess we're not hundred percent sure whether you'll be in the Emmy supporting or Emmy guest race this year, because it depends on how many episodes you end up being yeah. in as to, to which one you'd be submitted in. As far as, uh, 
as far as that's concerned. I, I'm not going to be um, – I, I, I'm not going to be – I don't think HBO is putting me up for, you know, any any awards. But, um, uh, you know, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. It, 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 they're pretty crowded categories and all yeah. those sorts of things. Yeah. They're big stars on this show. And they their parts are – are, are much larger. I, I'm always flattered when, when people say lovely things and say, you know, you deserve this or that. Uh, I, I appreciate that. That is a, is a reward in, in and of itself to me. Yeah. Uh, obviously we would all like to be recognized for our, our, our work. And yeah, and, uh, I appreciate those who, who do. Which Ed, Ed Harris uh, last season, I believe, said you should uh, get nominated for the Emmy. So a yeah. lot of people say some very nice things about your performance on the show. Yeah, I mean that was. Uh, in fact, I, I keep I kept wanting to run into Ed uh, somewhere to thank him, and that hadn't happened. Uh, so I, I actually sent him an email just just recently and said, "Look, it's long overdue, but really appreciate the shout out." Oh, that's nice. What uh, could with like without telling us anything that happens um, in the upcoming season, I don't want you to get in trouble, and also I don't really want to be spoilt as to yeah, what we're going to gonna see. Go yeah. Part how did you feel about how the sort of season ends? How the season ends, or at least how your arc ends, or where we're left at, at the end of the season. Like, what were your feelings? I, I have no idea how the season ends. Okay. Uh, no idea. Um, I know how how the season ends for Peter, and I, I would say that you know it's. Um, I will just say that it, you know, for example, I'll give you an example. Okay. I'll answer your question with an example. People, I was actually at a, a screening party a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't an episode I was in, and people were like talking about Dr. Ford. It's because you know he's William is hearing, or Man in Black is hearing. Ford speak through the different people, uh, El Lazo and all these people. And they're like, well, maybe Ford's really alive. And then said, and I went, Ford's dead. And they went, Oh, well, coming from him, it must be true. And I said, well, I'm not telling you any secrets. They've already, you know, Jonah Nolan and Lisa Joy have said that. Mm. I said, but just because you're dead doesn't mean you're gone. Mm. So that's the way I'll answer the question, whether you're dead or put in cold storage or whatever. I mean, there, there, there are so many opportunities for, all these characters. And I honestly don't know. I don't know. So I, I don't want to mislead by saying something that may end up being inaccurate. Yeah. Oh no, that's uh that's interesting. And like, I like that. It's a bit of like a riddle. Um, like the whole very, a riddle. Yeah. The whole thing's a riddle. Uh, the whole thing's a maze or a door and a door and all these things. So that's exciting. And um, things, things don't necessarily uh, play out in the season, in the episodes, the way they were, were the way they were filmed. Mm. Uh, I shot see I shot episode five, but I was not in episode five. Mm. So so I think once they because they they basically shoot this like a 10 hour movie. Yeah. And they board it like a movie. So mm. if they're doing all these scenes in this location for episode three, episode five, episode 10, they'll shoot them all at the same time, which is the only way really to do it. That's the way a, a feature film would be done. They don't shoot it like regular television that shoots mm. this episode you know, the, this many days. And so I think once they have it all together and start assembling it, they'll go, well, this works better here and this works better there, that sort of thing. Were you surprised when you didn't see yourself last night? No, I knew I wasn't going to be there because, uh, you know, the the press, you guys got like, didn't you get like five episodes? Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, my publicist told me that, because uh, she said, what episodes are you in? And I told her, and she goes, well, you're not in five. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, uh, so uh, anyway, uh, Lewis, so uh, what is, because it is a show of riddles, it is a show of questions. What's the biggest question you've had about Westworld? Oh, the biggest question I have about it, I think, is where, uh, what, what is, what the story is that, that Jonah and Lisa are telling. Um. And personally, I think that it's uh, a cautionary tale about ourselves in so many ways. Not only our humanity, man's inhumanity towards man, 
uh, because the robots, the hosts, are really more human than the hosts or than the, the than the humans. Wait, let me make sure I said that right. The hosts are more human than the humans in most cases, at least last season. Mm. This season, of course, they're finding their own narrative. They're they're creating their own narrative thanks to uh, Maeve and thanks to especially Dolores. Um, I think we all should be very cautious about AI. Uh, I, I, I definitely think it's something that we need to seriously think about. And I don't know that it was necessarily done for that reason. I, I do think they are tell, I do think they have a message to tell. I, and, uh, I think people should really, really look into it and think about it because it's, it's, it's here. It's now we are dealing with it. And, um, it, uh, it could very well uh, do some things that we don't particularly like. Mm. Yeah. We've got, um, what was I going to say? Um, how are the Emmy, how is it, what is it like going to the Emmys last year and being a part of that? Westworld was the most nominated show. It was. I did not go to the Emmy. Uh, I didn't go to the ceremony, but I went to the after party, which is better, just as good at least. And, uh, I mean, it's exciting. It's so exciting. Um, I would love to have seen some of our actors uh, get uh, win some trophies, but um, the after party was a lot of fun because you know we won five Emmys, uh, mainly in the uh, special specialty Emmys. The uh, and uh, it's just fun. I mean, everybody, uh, everybody's just so. I think just elated to be part of something that is just so well, uh, not only so well received, but, but is really spectacular. I mean, that episode last night, just, I just kept just going, wow. I mean, it just blew me away and the genius of it. Uh, it, it just, so everybody uh, was obviously very excited about it and let's hope we, you know, do even better this year. I think that that's certainly possible. Yeah. I, I remember bumping into you at the uh, after party last yeah. year, so, and I, I, I went. I, I was at the ceremony as well, just covering it. And uh, I think, I think the after party was better. I think that was. If you, if well, you have to go to one, you went to the right one. Yes, it was. Uh, it was a blast. It was absolutely a blast. Um, I, I don't. You know, HBO tends to have their parties at different places each year, but I, I kind of hope they have go back to the. Uh, Pacific Design Center. It was such a, an ma amazing uh, venue and a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it was really cool. Um, anyway, Lewis, um, any any final thoughts about Westworld season two that you can share with us or that you'd like to like to say? Well, I, I just I think that the more surprises are coming. I think more jaw dropping moments are coming. Um, gosh knows that. Uh, you know, the thing that I think so many people are like really, really wondering about, especially after last night's episode is um, uh, what happens to Teddy? You know, mm. I mean, we saw him again last night laying on a pile of. Uh, so I think I, that's the question that I get the most is like, what's up with Teddy, man? He was yeah. in the water. Did Dolores do that? Did Bernard do that? Did, well, of course, Bernard said in the, in the first episode that he killed everybody. So we'll, we'll see. Um, I just will say that there are still, you know, we're halfway through. There's, uh, uh, I think the surprises just continue to uh, go up and escalate in their magnitude. Oh, that's so cool. Stay tuned and yeah, you know, buckle up. Mm. Oh, and you you did tell us last year that you'd uh, there'd been a scene that you'd shot in season one that you thought they were going to hold over to season two. Have we well, seen? Have we? I I said I didn't. I didn't know what they were going to do with it. I said yeah. it could end up uh, down down the road, yeah. and it did not end up that I know of, at least. Okay, uh, so, so we haven't we haven't seen that scene yet. No. Okay. No. Cool. I'll let okay. you know. Just thought I'd check in on that scene. Um, thank you so much, Lewis, for chatting with us. All the best for Westwell with the Emmys this year. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been great chatting. Thanks, Matt. It's always a pleasure, buddy. Good to see you. Hope to see you at the party this year. Yeah, well, I've got I've got Lewis. Um, here's the photo of us at the Oh, do you? Yeah, oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, well, why don't you send me that? I don't yeah. have it. 